going to bless him. Not me, but bless him. Come on, bless him. Don't bless me, but bless God. Come on. Come here, you came here with a purpose. You came here to execute praise. You came here to execute praise. Don't let no devil stop you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth, oh ye gates. And bless the Lord in this place. He alone is worthy. 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 I came to lift him up. I came to lift him up. I came to praise him. 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 Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Let the devil know, devil, look. I don't look like what I've been through. God has brought me from a mighty long way. You need to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord, my rock, my shield, my buckler, my strong tower. He's a very present help in the time of need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody, give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, I give you the glory. I lift you up above all my sickness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, don't let the devil steal your joy. You came through too much hell to let the devil steal your joy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As we're standing, we're praying. As we're standing, I ask that you open your heart this morning. Because we serve a God that's knocking at your door. We serve a God that's trying to get in. Hallelujah, trying to get in your heart trying to get an understanding hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus come on give God praise thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah father we bless you today father we magnify you on today father we glorify you on today we lift you up, God. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would touch every soul in this building. Touch every person, every soul. Right now that's watching via Facebook Live, YouTube. God, I pray that, God, that today your people are going to open up their heart to you. That you may come in and just have your way in their lives. God, you are an amazing God. Hallelujah. We yield to your will and your purpose over our lives. Right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for being Lord over our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. We thank you for being Lord over our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
God knows it's cold outside, but I still got to praise. Thank you, Jesus. It snowed last Sunday, but I still got to praise. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you because there's somebody, there's somebody, there's somebody right now. There's somebody that don't have the heat in their home that's working properly. I'm asking God that you will warm them up, that God, that you will restore that broken furnace. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody, God, that there's, there, 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 there are people, there are somebody, God, right now that don't have a place to stay but huddled underneath a bridge, huddled in the bus stop. Thank you, Jesus. Slept in cars that didn't belong to them. Thank you, Jesus. Slept in homes that didn't belong to them. Just to keep warm, God. God, send your help right now. There's a family that's wondering where they're going to get their next meal. God, feed your children today. Feed your children today, God. Thank you, Jesus. There's families that are trying to figure out how they're going to pay their bills. God, restore today. Restore today, God. Hallelujah. Somebody lost a loved one. Someone is weeping. God, your people are in mourning. I'm asking that, God, that you will cover the bereaved family throughout all this land. Somebody's praying for that loved one that's in the hospital. God, you have your way. You have your way. You have your way. You restore today. You restore today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we're standing in the gap for your people today. We recognize that there are spiritual raging storms that are impacting your people. that have suffered catastrophic disasters spiritually. They're broken spiritually, mentally, physically, and even financially. God, we know that you can restore. God, we know that you can bring order back to that brokenness. Somebody say brokenness. That God, that even in their darkest hours, God, I know that you are able. So today, God, we seek your face. Come on, somebody. Today, God, we seek your face. We seek your will. We seek your purpose over our lives as we yield, God. As we yield and hasten to your throne, Lord. We ask God that you be a God in the presence today. As we open up to let you in, I pray for that sister that's walking the street. I pray for that brothers, hallelujah, that's trying to get his next fix. I pray right now that God, that you be a God that right now, God, in the midst of their storm, that I decree, God, that that, 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 that chapter ends there. But there's a new chapter in their life where they are free from drugs, alcoholism, suicidal thoughts, frustration, sickness and disease. 
God, as I yield to pray for my granddaughter who's in the hospital, God, you have your way right now. God, you touch young charity right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, you loose your hold. Loose your hold. Somebody say, loose your hold right now. God, we yield and pause for a moment to pray for Pastor Terry. That God, that you will cover her right now, God, in the name of Jesus. That you will restore her strength in her capability right now and remove the enemy for God you said in our weakness your strength is made perfect come on somebody come on somebody come on somebody God wants to restore you but you have to present yourself broke When we stand broken before God, God can then come and fix us up. But we first got to destroy the strong man so that God can have his way. So God, with a sincere heart, we open the door right now that God, that you may come in and just have your way. Let it rain in this place, God. Let it rain in this place, God, with your presence. Come on, come on, somebody. I need at least two or three praying soldiers. Two or three praying saints, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that don't mind giving God praise. And Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. For restoration has come to this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen. Listen, church. Listen, church. Listen. I want to I want I want to say something to you. Something hit my heart on this morning. And It's about our spiritual compass. Sometimes we get lost because we're depending on the GPS systems. And we're depending on the directions that we remember. But every once in a while, when we're traveling the road, that spiritual road, there's a detour. And because we're unfamiliar with the detour and we relied on the compass that we downloaded on our phones and the GPS systems. But when the satellite is no longer working and functioning like it should, it don't under, and you don't understand because your senses are not familiar with where the detour has taken you. Hallelujah. See, because sometimes a detour is not going to take you around the block and you'll wind up back on track. Sometimes the detour will take you miles out of the way before you get back on track. And sometimes it takes us years. What has taken us a moment to make a bad decision could take us years to line back up on the straight path. God said, look, listen, 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 real softly, real softly, real quick. What has happened is you relied on everybody else's directions. When you got lost in the detour, you forgot to look up. I, 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 I 
I love watching history and how the men and women back in the days they didn't they when, when, when they didn't even have the compasses and when the compasses didn't even work they knew how to look come on somebody they knew how to look up and when they looked up they looked at the stars and they looked at this star and that star and they watched them and just by a piece of paper and what they were looking at in the sky was enough to let them know how far they have detoured off course. And, 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 and it determines life and death because depending on how far they got off course depends on how much food they have. Depends on how much water they have to get them back on course so that they can make it to their destination. I'm reminded of the shipwreck that Paul was on. They fasted. They fasted not just Paul, but everybody on the boat. Everybody on the boat. There comes a time when even the pilots that are flying modern day airplanes, when the computer malfunction, they have to rely on what's up. Hallelujah. Because there are compasses that they use on a plane to determine whether they're upside down or whether they're right side up. But some of our spiritual compasses, God said, look, you don't need the GPS that you've been relying on to get you there. God said, learn like your fathers learn. They learn to look up. They learn to look up. They learn to look up. Listen. During the Christmas season, we preach about the three wise men that followed the star to Jesus. As long as they looked up, they saw the star. But when they went by what they believed to be a king, a carnal king, they realized that it wasn't a king in an earthly palace. So they lost sight of the star. It wasn't until they realized that when they came back out, when they realized that this Jesus, this king is not of this king's child. It's different. So when they realized the king was going to be a part of this kingship, Harriet's kingship, they left the palace. And then the star reappeared. When you disconnect from God, God said, I'll never disconnect you from you. All you got to do is look to the hills from which cometh your help, from your help cometh from the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But you may be sitting there. You may be standing. And you may be wondering. But I hear the Lord saying. You need to stand up and give him praise. Because this is a new week. Hallelujah. You need to stand up and give him praise. You need to give him praise. Because something great is about to take place. Something great is about to take place. Somebody's on the verge of a supernatural miracle. Somebody's on the verge of a supernatural miracle. Because your compass that was broken has now been restored. See, because God said you woke up this morning. 
you blocked everything else and your mind was determined to get to him God said your com compass the magnetic field that you needed to point that has been blocked hallelujah God said it's no longer blocked now you can see it was me calling you See, they have what they call the Bermuda Triangle. A lot of us heard about that. And oftentimes, planes will fly over and boats would sail over it. And their compass would be going haywire. The instruments on their panel would no longer operate as it should. And they no longer can rely on what they have there. The only person they can rely on is the compass. Up. See, because I serve a God that appoints you to who's your friend. And then he'll point you to who's your enemy. And I'm going to show you how he'll point you to who's your enemy. Your compass will kick in. When God no longer wants you to hang out with that person. So then things around you start happening so you'll no longer be. God said I disconnected your compass from that person so that you can reconnect with me and give me all the glory. God said, look, the reason why when you, when you raised your sails and there was no wind because I wanted to keep you there for my. And once you realize that it was going to be me who's blowing you forward, who's pushing you in the right direction. God said, look, it's only because I pushed the pause button on your life so that you can see me for who I am. Hallelujah. It ain't that something is broken. Hallelujah. I'm just reproducing what has should have been produced in you a long time ago. Somebody give God praise. I'm going to read something. I'm going to read something. I'm going to read something. I, I, I really feel God has a word for some of you in this place today. I see some faces I haven't seen in a long time, and I just want to say good to see you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know it's the Super Bowl game today, and... A lot of people are preparing for it and, you know, in, even in a pandemic. Hallelujah. I'm going to read St. Mark's 11 and 22. This morning I woke up and I, I everything that worried me, everything that bothered me, everything that, that, I ever thought that would try to hinder me. I went to bed last night with a made up mind to wake up and take back all my power. Hallelujah. So I, I, I said to myself, I said, I don't want to wake up feeling drained or stressed. I said, today, I'm not going to worry about what it's going to bring. I'm not going to worry about time and how much time. I'm just going to do what I got to do and let everything fall in place. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I would, if you would, repeat out to me if you're standing. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, 
and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye should have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But, somebody say but again. If ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. And the word of God is blessed. Come on, let's give God praise in his place. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. Come on, praise King. What you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I live my voice to worship. Joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear, and I exalt thee, I exalt Let's bless him in this place. Can you turn on number five? Number five. Come on, let's bless him in this place. Lord, we love you today, Jesus. God, we lift you up, Jesus. God, we bless you, Jesus. God, there's nobody like you. There's nobody like you, Jesus. This is why we bless you today. God, for being our healer. God, for being our protector. God, for being our way maker. God, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. You can get the mic right there on that pulpit right there, Miss Evan. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget no name. Jesus, I'll never, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no name. Jesus, I'll never, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget, no name. How can I forget, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget no day? How can I forget? How can I forget what you done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget no way? Put your hands together. Say never, never, never. I'll never forget. Say never, never, I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The way you brought me out. I'll never forget. The way you brought me through. I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The way you healed my body. I'll never forget. The way you picked me up. I'll never forget. And you turned me around. I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. 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 I'll never forget. The way you died for me. I'll never forget. Say I'll never Forget. The way you die for I'll me. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Say so I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Say so I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The way you brought me through. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The way you made me over. I'll never forget. Say so I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The way you made me whole. I'll never forget. Say so I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The way you heal my body. I'll never forget. Say so I'll never forget. Hey, hey. I'll never forget. Do I you protect me every I'll never day? Forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Say 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 I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Do I you brought me through? I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Do I you brought my mind through? I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. God, your miracle worker. I'll never forget. You're my healer today. I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never, I'll never forget. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never forget. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. He's my protector. I'll never forget. He's my way maker. He's my provider. He's my sustainer. I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Say I'll never forget say I'll never forget I'll never forget say I'll never forget I'll never forget I'll never forget say I'll never forget I'll never forget say I'll never forget I'll never forget put your hands together hey 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 
What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. My healer. Jesus. Provider. Jesus. We make up. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. There's power in Jesus. the name of Jesus. Jesus. There's power in Jesus. the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus and we thank you for that hallelujah won't you look at your neighbor and say neighbor, neighbor. I'll never forget I'll never forget come on you got a meaning in your heart neighbor I'll never, I'll never forget what the Lord, what the Lord has done for, done for me. Now give God praise. Hallelujah. 
Come on, if he brought you from a mighty long way, Hallelujah. you need to give him praise. Let the devil know I'll never forget what Hallelujah. Jesus has done for me. That if he brought me out, he can bring me out again. Hallelujah. Oh my God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He's worthy. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Oh, bless him. Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. From the bottom of my heart. Lord, we 
And Lord, we bless. Lord, we bless. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's the highest praise? Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Say all the glory. And all the honor. And all the praise. And all the praise. You deserve it. You
God if he brought you from a mighty long way if he's restoring your broken heart let the world know God you deserve not my mother not my father not my brother but Lord you deserve you kept me from sinking you kept me from sinking you kept me from sinking you kept me from I hear the Lord saying when well, you could have lost your mind God said I was right there hallelujah when you were about to throw in the towel he said I was right there hallelujah when the doctor said no he said I was right there when they closed the door on you God said I was right yes, sir. yeah and you see Pastor Hibbler that's why I praise him. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's why he deserves that when people say no to me, when people close the door on me, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Uh, I say, Lord, you deserve uh, all the praise. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, look, Pastor Charles, some of y'all probably already done this. Y'all probably went back and told the people that closed the door on you then and said, when I was in the world, when I was messed up, I want to thank you for not helping me when I thought I needed your help. Because when you didn't help me, I realized that all of my help comes from the Lord. Look, 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 wait, 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 wait. Because I don't think somebody got this. God says it's only when you realize that the only thing you see beneath your feet is the bottom. And there's nobody else you can look to on your right. You can look to on your left. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. And the only place you can look is up. God said when you look up uh, and you realize that all, all of your help comes from me. Not your mama. Not your daddy. Not even your pastor. When you called my name, uh, this was a signal enough for me to step down from my throne uh, into your situation and give you a book. Listen. Listen, God said the main reason why some of y'all got out the bed this morning is because he gave you a boost. God said, I gave you a boost. I gave you a boost so you can give me the glory. I gave you the boost so that you can praise me from saving that daughter, saving that child. God said, I gave you a Listen, listen, listen. We're going to say some of that. God got a word, hallelujah, for all of us. But I got something to say to you, though. I want to say something that God said what you are experiencing is only a test. And this too shall pass. I don't know who that's for. God said what you experience is only a test. But this too shall pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody bless the Lord in this place. Amen. We're going to take these next few moments to be a blessing unto the Lord and so we can move right along in the service. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Look, when you, when you, when you give today, when you give, even if you don't got to give, even if you don't have it to give, even if you don't have it to give, let me put it that way. I want you to touch this basket in good faith. And I want you to believe that God is going to open that door for you. See, I believe that it's not so much as the heart surgeon that can fix a broken heart. But I know that God is a heart fixer. And he's a mind regulator, amen? That even your broken heart, no matter how many pieces, it has been broken in two. Because I'm going to say this much right here. People can break things. And the same people that can break things can break your heart. And for a lot of us, our hearts remain broken and unable to be fixed only because we haven't learned to let go of some things. We're living with a broken heart when we ourselves need to examine ourselves and go before God and release some things to God and say, Lord, I take off me so that you can shine on the inside of me so that this broken heart that I've been carrying for decades can be restored. Amen, somebody? Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God, ain't he? Hallelujah. Here's the thing I know about God. God loves a cheerful giver. And so often, so often, you may have people giving out of their abundance, and giving according to the word, but there are some people that literally, literally give their all. And they all might just be the change in their pocket. While some of us will hold back some and get that McDonald's sandwich and that two-piece Popeye's chicken dinner. Hallelujah. And, but I serve a God who loves a cheerful giver. And I believe in God for big things in this year, 2021. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone had a chance to be a blessing unto the Lord. Let us stand to our feet. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to point your hand towards this basket. And when you point your hand this way, I want for you to believe. Believe that the doors are going to be open. Amen. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that have given on today. I'm asking that God that you would give them increase. 
I bless you for those that didn't even have to give but had faith enough to touch this basket and believe you, God, to prosper them, to increase them. So, Lord, right now, I thank you for jobs and promotions. I thank you for debts being canceled. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God, hallelujah, for the pre-approval becoming an approval. Right now, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a difference. You can be pre-approved, but you got to get approved. I thank you, God, because they're approved right now for the home. Hallelujah. The car. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to believe it. I only heard a couple of hallelujahs, Hallelujah. but I know thank that there's more Lord. people in this building right now yeah. Yeah. that thank want God. their own home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. So, Father, you do it right now in the name of Jesus, and we bless you, God. We ask, ask, oh, Lord, that you would cause things to run over, increase. I'm asking that, God, those windows become stretched open beyond their imagination and beyond their strength. Your word said your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Even your ways are higher than our ways. So, God, at whatever number we think, we know God is bigger than that. We say we want a three-bedroom, but God, I know that you already got a five-bedroom house out there for me. Come on, somebody. Because we can say one thing, but God already got a bigger plan. God has a bigger plan. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. I thank you for blessing each of us, God, with the desires of our heart according to your word. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. I want you to repeat after me. Lord, Lord, enlarge, enlarge my territory. My territory. Come on now. Lord, Lord, enlarge, enlarge my territory. My territory. Look, look, some of y'all don't even mean it. I need for y'all to stand up. Because look, look, I need for y'all to stand up because I need for y'all to really, really pour out in this thing. Because when God pour out in me. I want him to cause an overflow to everybody else. Lord, enlarge my territory. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need a little room. Hallelujah. Six feet, six feet, six feet. Lord, enlarge my territory. Now, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Come on now, give God a praise. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. If you believe it, then receive it. I know he will. Thank you, Jesus. Even when the sun is not shining, I know he will. Mm. He will, he will, he will. You know what, Pastor Charles? He'll do it on purpose. <laughs> he'll do it on purpose. Hallelujah. When you... When you think that this is it, God said, I'm going to do it on purpose. I'm going to bless him on purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have you ever got a blessing unexpectedly? That's God blessing you on purpose. Hallelujah. You weren't even looking for it. He purposely blessed you. He purposely blessed you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I give the Lord praise. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you. We're going to get another selection, amen. And then we're going to get right into the word, amen. Um, I, I really believe God has something for all of us in this place on today, amen. Serve an amazing God, amen. And look, I'm looking forward on a great year. Anybody looking for that part, amen, too, amen. also, amen. We already in February. This is February 7th, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I remember 25 years ago, 
on the 25th, I believe, my wife, she started what they call dilating when they get ready to give birth to a child. And this was going to be like one of the hardest births. And um, I remember the Lord telling me, putting it on my heart, and I shared it with my wife before she conceived my daughter. And I said, honey, that's going to be an experience when you give birth to our child. I saw something in the spirit and I began to pray. I, I saw it like four months before she even gave birth. And I began to pray and share that with my wife. I told my wife, I said, look, the enemy is going to try. Something's going to happen between you and the child. And I don't know if she really, I don't know if she really, you know, believed me at the time, but when she went into labor, she started her labor pain, started on the 7th. She gave birth on the 8th. And we went to the hospital, and she got to the point where they, she was in so much pain. You know, now they give you those epidurals and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of y'all mothers, y'all didn't get those when y'all were giving birth because I don't even think they was out then. I don't know. They just told y'all to push, and y'all pushed. Hallelujah. Now they got a little help. Amen, to numb them up. But anyways, <laughs> um, she began to give birth. And as she was pushing, and I cut the umbilical cord of my daughter, but my daughter wasn't breathing. She wasn't breathing. She wasn't breathing. My mother-in-law, she was in the room, and, and I said, let's, let's, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Because this is what I foresaw. And we begin to pray. And I, I, I'm, I'm a God fearing man, and I believe God in so many different ways. And I knew that He is a healer, and I know that He hears my prayer. And when you know that with confidence, you can ask, and it shall be given. Amen. And so when I, I begin, my mother-in-law, we both begin to pray, walking around the room, the doctor's trying to do everything they possibly can. Minutes went by, my daughter wasn't breathing. And my wife began, she, she began to worry, like, what's wrong with my baby? Me and my mother-in-law, we kept telling her, nothing, nothing, nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong. And no cry from the baby, minutes went by, no cry from the baby. So me and my mother-in-law, we just kept praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way. God deliver. Have your way. Have your way. And you know how we, if you're sanctified, you know when you get in those hospitals, you don't keep it low key. Hallelujah. So everybody on that floor heard us praying. Hallelujah. So we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, and we're believing God. And, you know, you, you can see the nurses, they're getting frantic, and the doctors try to do everything he can. He, you know, then they handle the baby all kinds of ways, trying to get him to wake up and get him to breathe. And they sticking this thing down her throat, you know, trying to suck out, if anything, in her stomach and all that. And I said, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command her to breathe. And by the time that doctor took that snout out of her nose, she went, and... And I'm telling you, right then and there, that brought so much joy. I said, honey, I told you, wasn't nothing wrong with the baby. Come on, somebody give God praise. <laughs> and so a lot of y'all may wonder why she got that name, Faith. It's because I have faith enough to believe God for a miracle. <laughs> and y'all probably wonder why Hope got the name Hope because I was hoping she wasn't going to be born at home <laughs> and I almost had to give I, had to, I almost had to deliver my own baby you know Hope and it's crazy because the, 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 the Amalons they was brand new, they were young people they kept saying she coming out butt first and I'm like butt first 
oh, because ain't no, I ain't never seen a baby with a hairy butt. I'm like, that's her head. <laughs> they kept saying it was her butt coming out. I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, no, that's her head. And so uh, they had uh, a vet come, and he realized, he's like, oh, y'all got it all wrong. He right, that's her head. <laughs> they was getting all scared. I'm like, no, no, no. But to God be the glory. Let's give God praise in here. Amen. And my daughter, Faith, she, 25 years ago, it took her about 10 minutes to take her first breath. And she, 25 years later, her birthday is tomorrow. And I thank God for her. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And Khadijah, your story is different because we used to watch that show with that Khadijah and that Queen Latifah. She, her name was Khadijah, right? That's how you got your name. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. God is good. Huh? Your birthday Tuesday? You born tonight? Amen. Good Lord. Happy birthday. Charles Charles going to be 59, right? 56? Oh, okay. All right, then. I don't wish you I, I know somebody was right at the door. Oh, that's, that's Will. Will, Deacon, Deacon. Deacon Davis, he, he had, you had 60, right? All right, Deacon Davis, 60 right there, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. If we can get another song, I'll get my grandson, amen. Come on, little Martel, amen. Oh, yeah, he, he didn't learn how to walk. He all over the place. Can you turn on number five? Oh, yeah, use that one. You have, you have rescued my life. You have, you have 
rescued my life. And I'm never, and I'm never, never going back. Say so you have rescued, you, you have, have rescued, rescued my life. Say so you have, you have rescued my life. And I'm never, and I'm never, never going back. back. My response is, my response is, hallelujah. hallelujah. You're my redeemer. You're my Say you have rescued my life. 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 And you turn me around. You have rescued me. Say you have rescued. You rescued me. You rescued me. That's why I thank you, Lord. Say you have rescued me. You have rescued me. Say you have rescued me. And I'm dead. And I'm dead. response is my, my response is hallelujah you're my redeemer you're my redeemer hallelujah, hallelujah. my response my is response hallelujah. hallelujah you're my redeemer you're my redeemer Hallelujah.
Jesus, you rescued my life. God, we love you today. We worship you because you rescued our life. When we were lost in sin, you rescued our life. You brought us salvation. You have rescued my Now we need to life. worship you, Jesus. You, you have rescued my you life. You rescued our life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. Come on and give God praise. Amen. Come on, if he rescued you today, let the devil know I'm never going back. I came too far. And I'm never going back. Hallelujah. Uh, and the word it says, remember Lot's wife. When the angel of the Lord told him and his family to run to the mountains, and gave him a command not to look back. See, the problem with a lot of us, we look back. And we look back, we get caught up in who we used to be. But we have to realize that we are free from that. That's why I love that song, and I thank God for that song. And I'm never going back. Lord, you have rescued my life. Come on, hallelujah. See, thank you, Jesus. There were times when a lot of us, we were so out of control that when we look at ourselves now today, we say to ourselves like, Lord, if the people that said I would amount to be nothing, they would see me now. And even when you run into those friends that, that, didn't, that, that have not decide, decided that they're going to serve the Lord, you even have to remind them that I'm not going back. God has rescued my life, and I owe them all of me. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, church, let's give God another hand praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to go today uh, again back in the book of St. Mark's, but today we're going to go to chapter 2. St. Mark's chapter 2, amen. And I want to use for a thought today, by any means necessary, you hear me, Deacon Davis? By any means necessary. Hallelujah. This, this, this is for somebody today, amen. Hallelujah. God said, whatever it takes, I'm going to get to you by any means necessary. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You, you, you may be a hell raiser. Hallelujah, but by any means necessary. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You might have laid your bed in hell. God said if I got to come to hell, by any means necessary. I'm coming to get, oh my God. <laughs> any means necessary. I'll set you free. Amen. Amen. When you have the word, I want you to say amen. I don't know if he can hear and put it. I didn't get it up there yet. Put it on number four on the main one. Hit number four. There you go right there. Amen. We there now. You, you, you got it under control now. By any means necessary. <laughs> I'm going to find a glitch. Amen. 
Spirit of the living God, we thank and praise you for the word that's about to be spoken in this place, Lord. I decrease that you may increase in me. I yield to the will and purpose that you have over my life. I take no glory for myself. I am but a vessel of clay made in your likeness and in your image. As I speak today, I speak with your exhale, the breath that you have placed into me, the life and the legacy that you have placed over my head before your people. I ask, oh God, that you will speak a word to your people. Let them know today, God, by any means necessary. Today, change begins. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe, let me hear you shout amen. 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 Ask Pastor Charles would he begin reading. Read the first verse. We're going to tag team on this reading real quick. Amen. Amen. St. Mark chapter 2, beginning verse 1. It says, And again he entered to Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Come on. He, it was noise. Notice that he was, come on, somebody, in the, in house. the house. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read. It says, And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no what room to receive them. No, not as much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Read, Charles. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Keep going. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Keep going. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. Stop right there. You may take your seat. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, by any means necessary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it, 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 is, it, is, it is something here that when I read this, and it is amazing because um, now that Jesus had entered into Capion after the same days, after some days, and it was knows that he was in the house. Now, here's the thing here that we have to understand. Uh, the, the key to this is noticing that he's in the house. Come on, somebody. See, the thing is that so often that if the doors are closed, we tend to get upset and go back to what we used to do when we can't get in the house. And so often that when we, we can visit loved ones and friends and we can know that they are in the house, but they won't let us in the house. Hallelujah. But we notice here in the story that here was a man carried by four of his friends. And see, it was so much noise going on and the people noticed that Jesus, that when he preached, they realized that he was in the house. So they noticed that, look, we got to get in there by any means necessary. Hallelujah. Because what was in the house was healing in the house. It was deliverance in the house. It was joy in the house. It was peace in the house. But as long as I'm outside of the house, matter of fact, it was healing in the house. Hallelujah. I don't know what you want and wanted when you came in the house, but whatever you needed, it was in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the problem is getting in the house. See, see, for some of us, God shook us 
And for those that didn't uh, uh, budge according to the shaking, hallelujah. And for those of you that are here because God shook you, hallelujah, out of your sleep, hallelujah. God has a purpose over your life. There are so many of us, we're, we're watching Facebook Live, which is great. That's great. That's great. Because of the pandemic right now, hallelujah. All that is, all of the, all of that is good, hallelujah. But if God shook you. See what I'm saying? You, you, you know that God is waking you up for a purpose to receive something. Hallelujah. God said, I came to give you something, but in order for you to get it, you got to get in the house. Hallelujah. A lot of us, were getting it, hallelujah, through our ministries, via our media. We're getting, that's a good word. We're getting a good word because we're believing in what we're seeing. We're supporting our ministry. We're supporting our people. Hallelujah. That's great. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. But there come a time when all of this is over and before all of this happened, the doors of the church have always been open. But there are some churches that get to a point where they reach their capacity. And because of their capacity and because of the rules that are governed by, you know, society about how many people you can have in one building at one time, hallelujah, they can't go over that number. So they close the door. But there are some people that don't like that feeling because to get to a place and realize the door is closed, it bores you over. Hallelujah. But I'm reminded of that. There is a man that had four friends that, that knew that, look, my brother needs healing. My brother needs to be delivered. My brother needs to be set free. My sister need a doctor that adopted a doctor called Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know exactly what to bring this person to. Now, here's the thing right here. These men did get discouraged because they couldn't get in through the door. Hallelujah. They came up with a great idea. Hallelujah. We got to get him in here by any means necessary. So the thing was is that... Uh, we wasn't dealing with just any old body, see, because anybody can call themselves a Christian. Hallelujah. Anybody can call themselves a, a praise and a this, that, and the other. A praise. They give I just praise haters, put it like that. Hallelujah. And you find out later on, they don't have the ability to back up the hype that they have been speaking. Here's the thing here that when God puts something in you, you become mentally constructive. Therefore, when you're speaking to someone, hallelujah, God will bring back into remembrance what you learned. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will just bring it up. So we wasn't, we, we're not just talking about any kind of four friends here. We're talking about four men with skills, hallelujah, that knew exactly how a roof was put together and knew exactly how to take it apart, hallelujah. So I, I, I love to hang around people that love the Lord because for the simple fact that if I can't get something right, because me and Pastor Charles, we can talk and feed each other. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And if I talk to other saints, we can talk until we feed each other. And we'll just get happy and God will just fill us up with all kinds of different revelation. Hallelujah. But here's the thing here, that when God begins to move in your life, it opens up doors for you to help other people. But God will not put more on you than you can bear. See, here's the thing that God, here, here, here's the weight of one man, and then you have to get this man to the roof. And now you have to lure him down. So you just don't get to the roof without rope. <laughs> you just can't clamber. So first of all, look, brother, you go fetch some rope. 
hallelujah, and we'll be up here getting the roof off the place. And so while you're getting the rope, hallelujah, we'll be tearing the roof off the place because whatever it takes by any means necessary. So, 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 while one is getting the rope, there has to be a mother getting the ladder. We have to figure out a way to get him up here without losing balance or dropping him back to the ground. So everybody comes up with an idea to get him to the roof. So the idea comes in, we got to be able to lure him down in the same bed that we brought him up in. So we got four corners on the bed. So four men had to position themselves on four parts of the roof. And they had to tie the rope and equally lower it down at the sink. So that goes to show you that these four men were equally yoked. <laughs> look, 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 look. I, I'm, 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 oh my God. Hallelujah. So, so by them being equally yoked, they were all working with one mind. Hallelujah. They were working at one accord. They had one purpose. Hallelujah. They were all standing in one position, right over the one that can deliver, right over the one that can set free. They had to aim him and lure him down in a position that he wouldn't land on anybody else. So, so, so while, while they're luring him down, at the same time, they had to navigate. You see what I'm saying? They had to navigate. Hallelujah. Look, look, we got to, I need you to move over that way just a little bit. Pull the rope a little bit hard so we can get him over here so, so we won't land on this person. Matter of fact, we got to go this way and go. So basically, all of them work in unison. Hallelujah. We got to get him down there without injuring anybody else or injuring this person. I hear the Lord saying, no matter what it takes, hallelujah, no matter what it takes, by any means necessary, thank you, Jesus, uh, hallelujah, don't let your sons and your daughters die. Look, here's the thing right here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That when they got to the point of it's going to be virtually impossible to go through this door because it was too crowded in the house. But if you really want the word and you're trying to get them to the word, Hallelujah. I, 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 I love it because my wife, she kept my daughters while I sat up on the pulpit. And when they got out of order, she just looked at them. Had you ever, mothers, have you ever developed that look? That your children knew that look? That's the look of, okay, keep it up. Hallelujah. And then you got those, those, those older saints, they'll come down at the choir stand with their fingers up. Still singing. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Hold that finger up. Because they got you to the place where you need to hear the word of God for yourself. Hallelujah. So I need to get my brother, my sister, if I can't get them through the door. I got to take the roof off the place because I serve a God without walls. Hallelujah. I'll take the word to wherever they're standing at. Hallelujah. And I'll let the word come down right where they're at so they'll get a word. Listen. Listen. By any means necessary. As the Lord was putting this in my spirit, I begin to... Things, uh, things when, I, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about the word, things begin to manifest. I begin to see things, see the word. And as I was reading up on it, and I know the story, I read it so many times, as it was just being just placed in my spirit, I heard the Lord saying, 
by any means necessary. That it ain't so much as I got to get them in here. They need to let me in there. It ain't so much as you need to take the roof off the place so that you can get them in. God said, I need to clear their minds so that I can come in and I can be that very present help in the time of need. Here's the thing. We talked about knocking. We talked about God seeing you through the windows. We talked about hardship. But one thing we got to understand here is that God said, look, by every means necessary, you're locked up in here. And I'm going to do everything that's possible by any means necessary. Matter of fact, I'm reminded that when the disciples were praying and Jesus has already risen from the grave, there were times when Jesus just appeared right in their company. He didn't come in no door. He didn't come through no window. He just appeared right where they were standing. God said, look, the moment you decide to open up, it ain't the roof that's keeping the snow from coming in and the cold wind from coming in. It ain't the roof that has stopped the rain and caused the rain to go to the sides of the building. It ain't the roof that has stopped the wind and caused the wind to go into another direction. None of that can stop. Stop me. Then when you make up in your mind that this is what I want to do, this is something I got to do, and I'm, oh my God, hallelujah. I need to know if I got at least four people in here that they understand what I'm saying right now. Thank you, Jesus. And, and it, it's, it's, it, it amazes me because so often, we shut him out. I, I, we shut him out when we, when we see strangers. We shut him out when we don't answer our phones. We shut him out. We shut him out in so many different ways. When God said, I need you to just take your, what you call your hat off and open up your mind. See, because one of the greatest speakers spoke a sermon is nothing better than a made up mind. When you make up in your mind, and these four brothers right here made up in their mind by any means necessary. You got a mother and son team right there that are stand out there and minister men and women and children, hallelujah, by any means necessary. I saw y'all bearing the weather in the rain and the winds and the snow at times before the pandemic, hallelujah. No matter what came y'all way, y'all beat it on the drums. And at times I know that when people walked up, y'all gave them a word. God always have a word in a drummer boy's hand. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo! Pastor Charles, I, I was thinking that it was four men carrying one man. Now we have five men. The number of grace. I want to show you something here. What carried the four men? Can I speak to you just for a moment? Can I speak to you just for a moment? What carried the four men? What carried the four men is that we walk by faith and not by sight. It wasn't what they saw stopping them. 
It's what they believed on the inside of them. I need some people that don't mind walking by faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because what carries you is what you believe. Hallelujah. If you believe you can't make it, then maybe you may not make it. But if you have faith, you're going to make it. I don't care what devil in hell gets in your way. You just get to stepping and God is going to make up. See, we're carried. When our faith connect with God, God gives us a strategy. Hallelujah. God gives us a strategy. And when he gives us a strategy, no devil in hell, I don't care if your compass is broken. God said, I gave you a strategy so that when you come up against the wiles of the enemy, recognize I've already lifted up a standard. I Here's the thing. I noticed I couldn't get in this way. Because the door was unbudgeable. We got to understand that every house has a window. And you can look in and you can notice what was really going on in the inside. And faith was one of the weapons that carried these four men. Faith was one of the weapons that gave them the idea that look, we know if we can't get through the front door. We can't come in through the back door. Hallelujah. And I know the old song, Saint Sucker song said, if you, you can't go over, you can't go under. You must come in at the door. But every once in a while, in this instance, God changed that. Hallelujah. By any means necessary, that whatever it takes, whatever it takes, don't allow what looks like that can and would stop you, keep you from trying. Because every door that closes in your direction, you best believe there's another door opening in your direction. Hallelujah. And you can go back and say, I thank God that you closed that door because I would have never saw the door over there. Hallelujah. And when you close that door, I realized my real opportunity was over there. And I saw that door swing open when that door swung. Oh my God. Some of y'all don't hear me right now. Hallelujah. So, so let, me, let me just read this a little bit more of this. Verse 4 says, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they have broken it up. Let me tell you something. Here's what God is saying. I'll tear all of that up just to get to you. I said, I'll take the roof off this place if I got to. I'll shake the foundation if I got to get your attention. If you've been avoiding me, I'll turn every light red in your direction just so you can stop, just so I can talk to you. Hallelujah. I'll block every intersection just so I can save your life. I'll shut down every building just so I can get. Oh, my God. I hear the Lord saying there's nothing that can keep you from me. There's nothing that can keep. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. That can keep him from you. Because no matter what comes your way. God said look. I'm still the God that's knocking. And when you hear me on your roof. I begin to look around this building. And look around my house. And. I noticed that every where I look in the gangway on the side there was icicles. And as the heat was turned on in the building, the snow begins to melt and the water begins to drip and the more water begins to drip and the more snow begins to melt, the bigger the icicle get. The bigger it gets. And the bigger that gets, 
hallelujah, the heavier it becomes. God said there are some things that are melting around you and is weighing you down. God said it's time to break those things off. Everybody's standing. God said it's time to break those things off. I'm believing God to break cancer out of your life. Pastor Terry, I'm believing God to move sickness out of God's people. As I stand in the position, as I intercede for God's people, I'm believing God for a supernatural miracle. And that I'm, I'm taking a roof off the place so that God can get your attention. I'm taking a roof off the place, so hallelujah, so that God can save your life. I know you're cold because it's cold outside. But I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I know he's able. Come on, somebody. I know he's able. Thank you, Jesus. Look. Verse 5 says, and when Jesus saw their faith, mm, there it is. Faith carried them when no one else could. Faith carried them when no one else was able. Faith is one of the key components that brought us from a mighty long way. It was because of the faith of our fathers, our grandparents, hallelujah, that brought us over to help us receive a promise. It was the faith that they had in God that one day, it ain't gonna be like it was when they were little boys and girls, that one day, mm, this is Black History Month, ain't it? Hallelujah. I love watching Black History programs, Black History stories. I love that. One of the longest movies that's out there pertaining to Black History is Roots. You can't just watch one part. You watch the whole thing. And every year, as a Jew, as a, every year when I was a young man, I would it, it would it would come on in this month, and it would play. It would play until it was all the way done. The whole month. And some some of the things would when you're a young man it made you angry ever just got angry looking at it just made you just feel bitterly angry and as you get older you understand it's not designed to make you angry it's to remind you where you came from hmm. and god has brought us from a mighty long way it's different now but we still have racism when we are made by the same God. Mm. Somebody say amen. amen. See, here's the thing. Everybody ain't going to like it when you are completely delivered. See, because when Jesus said these key words, those praise haters that was in there, just looky lose, just wanting to just find something to talk about mm -hmm. and, and to find treason against the word they already had then. They didn't know they was in the midst of the word, that the word was there. He said, when Jesus saw that faith, he said unto them, unto the sick, a palsy, son, thou sins be forgiven thee. But listen, he said, but there were certain sectarians of the strives sitting there and reasoning in their heart. Why do this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit 
that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether is it easier to say unto the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But they but that ye may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sin. Look at this. Look what he says. He said to the sick of palsy. But I'm going to go back and 10 again. I want to show you something. But that ye may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sin. This is the one time that Jesus revealed who he is. You see what he's doing here? He's revealing who he is. But even then, they still not going to get it. Hallelujah. Because he said, but that ye may know that the Son a man that have power on to forgive sin. Verse 11 says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it like this before. I saw musicians. I saw the priests do their little things. But I ain't never saw like this before. Y'all see that? He reveals who he was to those praise haters. And I tell you what, I'll soothe your boat or whatever you want to call it up thy bed and walk. It's something, now look, what they were bound in, God said, you are now carrying. I don't think some of y'all see. What has had you down and out, God said, pick it up and carry it. Because it's the very thing that has been carrying you into self-destruction. But God said, now it's time for you to pick it up. So he tells them, I was lured in with a bed. I was carried in on my bed. And now I have the strength to carry. Father, as I lift my hands right now, all eyes closed, I pray that everything that has been broken, that it is no longer carrying them. I declare, in the name of Jesus, that they are able to carry it. That what has had them, that what has kept them from you, no longer have the power to keep them. I'm declaring that what's not working those broken things they no longer have to be carried they no longer have to be provided for today they are carried it Jesus said if there's any man that wants to follow me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me that no longer being carried.
carried. They are carrying. To reign with me is to suffer with me. I declare that the roof that has overshadowed them is being removed right now so that God that you may enter in I declare that the roof is being removed. The roof is on fire today. So that you may come in. That it may purify your lives. That every sickness. Everything that has attached itself to you. It's been removed in the name of Jesus. Restoration, restoration has come to this house. So that when you leave this house and when you go to your house, God is restoring right now. Everything that's out of order, everything that's out of control, God is restoring right now. All of the clutter... God is restoring right now. Peace has come to your house right now in the name of Jesus. Joy has come right now. God said things are changing in your life for the good. So, Father, right now, as you bless your people from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, I thank you for restoring and turning things around in their lives. I thank you, God, because you are the only one able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God, today we openly open up that you may enter in and just have your way. Repeat after me, Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart. And be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for giving me another chance to get it right. I thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. So, Lord... I want you to look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor for me. Look at your neighbor. And say, no matter what it takes, by any means, necessary. Father, as we go from this place, but never from your presence, may your rest rule and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. Let's give God praise. God bless you, everybody on Facebook. We love you. Hallelujah. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purified, you take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be on the fire. Purified.